I'm speaking on vision-based navigation with PX4 and ROS. And this is really a link between the two um, and how to use both at the same time, how to use your ROS stuff and how to use cameras at the same time as well. Uh, so uh, our agenda for today is I'm gonna give you a quick overview of the different types of vision-based navigation that we can do with what's existing today and what it already has actually reference implementations that you can use. Um, then I'm gonna speak very briefly on Mavros and how to use Mavros from the ROS side to control these PX4 interfaces. Uh, I'll go through the reference implementations quickly um, and yeah, and then talk a little bit about the future as well. So uh, the vision interfaces that we have um, I'll, this first one is obstacle avoidance. And this is really, uh, with drones, we have a few different flight modes. And one of the most popular ones is autonomous flight. You give the drone a mission and you say, I want you to fly from here to there, maybe taking pictures along the way, maybe deliver some cargo when you get there, or uh, spray some plants along the way. Uh, we had the great ag session earlier. Um, so the issue is that in the real world, you don't always get to choose where you fly and you don't always get to have all of the obstacles not in your way. So the obstacle avoidance is really in these missions, how to stop the drone from hitting things and still complete its mission successfully. The next one is collision prevention and this is in manual flight. So in manual flight, you don't, the drone doesn't know what you're trying to do, where you want to go. Maybe you're actually trying to get a perfect picture of something. You're trying to inspect a telephone pole or an, a bridge, or it might be police trying to track someone around like a, a car that's been stolen or something like this. So they really, in this case, you really care about the user input not causing the drone to fly into stuff. And for this case, we have implemented something that stops the vehicle from flying into things and also if you just send it just at the edge of something, it'll just nudge you very slightly around it. So there's no surprises for the user and at the same time, the drone is safe. And the third one is uh, visual inertial odometry. It's a bit of a mouthful. This is uh, what happens when you don't have GPS. So you can use a camera to estimate your motion, but the thing with cameras is they don't give you a sense of scale. Uh, to demonstrate, you could be looking at a big car, or you could be looking at a toy car and the big car might be far away and the toy car close up and you cannot tell the difference between them with a camera. So in this case, we add an accelerometer and by measuring the absolute values of our acceleration, we can give our motion scale. And then we can tell just with a camera and the built-in accelerometer, how much we're moving, which is really, really useful. Um, there's actually a bunch of use cases for this, uh, both flying inside of buildings, um, flying in areas with very high GPS noise. So for example, uh, under power lines or under bridges or between skyscrapers, things like this. And also protecting against interference. Um, there are actually a lot of cases where somebody, you know, whether it's the local teenager who's trying to cause trouble or whether it's a trucker who doesn't want his company tracking where he's driving or what hours he's working. Um, when you're flying bigger and more expensive drones, it's really important that you're not susceptible to these types of things. So here's a little bit of a, let's uh, shock you with a bunch of information. Um, for the avoidance in PX4, we have on the left, a bunch of, um, we have a couple different ways. So the, this is sort of the message flow. You, the flight controller sends to the vision system uh, the trajectory. So this is the, in PX4 of the show, we call this the triplets. It's the previous waypoint you're coming from and the next two waypoints that you're gonna be going to, as well as the position of the vehicle and its velocity, and you can get all sorts of other information. And then the vision system can send back to the flight controller what it wants the trajectory to be. So you can just send back the same waypoints that it sent you, and it'll be exactly like the vision system isn't even there. Or you can override it with your own custom waypoints, or you can even send time parameterized Bezier curves up to fifth order Bezier curves. And this lets you control the motion of the drone really well. 
the collision prevention, uh, you just send a 2D circular array of data of distances to where obstacles are. And the drone will figure out when it can stop and when it can go. Um, and then for the visual inertial odometry, you send odometry messages and in either body or local frame, I recommend sending velocity in body frame because it's quick and easy and it's from my experience, also the most robust. So once you have those, and those were all in Mavlink, you now need to get the data out of ROS and into Mavlink. And this is where Mavros comes in. Uh, Ferang told, told us about this earlier. Um, so you have your node where you have your data and you want to get it into the flight controller. You send it into Mavros, Mavros sends it to the flight controller. And not all of the messages have an exact one-to-one -one correspondence. Um, the coordinate systems are different. Uh, yeah, um, PX4 uses an NED coordinate system, whereas uh, ROS uses ENU. So it can be a little bit confusing if you want to do this your own, um, which you will uh, <laughs> hopefully not have to do. Hopefully this can be made easy by using something like MavROS. Uh, so then once we have this MavROS layer in the middle, this translates those previous messages that we saw. Uh, so in ROS, you just send a um, you send a geometry message, or sorry, you receive a geometry message with the um, a pose stamped and a twist stamped that come in on the local position pose and velocity. You subscribe to those, and you get your drone uh, position and velocity information and orientation. And then similar for the trajectory, it's Mavros trajectory, and you either um, send it, uh, receive the desired, or send out the generated. And uh, this is a Mavros trajectory message. You can look up the references from what Farang shared earlier. Um, similarly, for the obstacle distance, you just send it this. It's a standard ROS sen sensor messages laser scan message. Um, and for the odometry, uh, it's a standard ROS nav messages odometry message that you send out. So let's go on to our reference designs. How, you, how, what can you start with and how can you make this work quickly? So, the, um, so in the PX4 avoidance, uh, we have the flight controller, we have the avoidance, and you need to connect some kind of depth sensor. This can be uh, Intel, uh, one of the real sense, or this can be a structure core, or this can be any or a big fancy expensive LIDAR system. You can do whatever you want. It just needs some depth information. Uh, you can then send this, uh, uh, you run the avoidance node and it will send uh, to Mavros uh, what the trajectory should be um, and what, the op what that obstacle distance is. And it'll also send a heartbeat. This is really important so that the flight controller knows that your avoidance is still running. Um, similarly, the flight controller will send in the Mavlink side um, what the triplet is that I told you about earlier. It's the previous waypoint and the next two waypoints. It'll send the vehicle position, which includes some orientation information, and also a heartbeat so that your avoidance knows that your flight controller is running. Mavros sits in the middle and it translates these so that your Mavlink gets turned into this and your avoidance can take it in and your ROS messages get sent into Mavlink and the flight controller can take it in. And yeah, so future improvements. Um, right now, the actual avoidance algorithm is pretty simple uh, and it doesn't take into account the complex vehicle dynamics that drones have with, well, it's mostly uh, <laughs> Newtonian dynamics. It's nothing crazy complex. There's no Ackerman angles or things like this, but the drones are very quick and you don't have the option of just turning off the power like you do with so many other types of robots. So uh, I think a huge upgrade would be planning with the vehicle dynamics taken into account. The next one is that the avoidance doesn't use the Bezier curve interface. It just makes some new waypoints. And so if you want some really precise control, you can just use the Bezier curve and you can plan exact motions that are time parameterized as well. So you can plan the speed um, with a fifth order Bezier curve. And another big improvement would be super robust world modeling. 
at the moment it's using histograms and point clouds. I think there are much better ways that we could be doing this. So, and these are things, yeah, that of course we'd love to have external contributions. And I know there were questions about what can I do to contribute? Well, here's something. Uh, the VIO reference design. Um, this is attaching a T265 into the Arterian VIO. Um, this is another ROS node. This sends out the odometry message and the heartbeat. Um, and that gets translated here from ROS coordinate system into the flight controller coordinate system um, or Mavlink coordinate systems actually standardized on Mavlink. And then you, it's pretty much plug and play. Um, there's a few small things to get right, but it takes all of the hard work out of it. Uh, yeah, so there's a bunch of also future ROS integrations that could happen. Uh, if people are looking for ideas of what to do, um, we could be using uh, Orb Slam, RGB, RGDB, D Slam, um, VIO DOM, things up straight out of ROS packages. Um, other interesting ideas, you could use PX4 for localization in ROS. So if you are even not doing drones, but if you're doing robots, you could use an IMU or some other uh, optical flow system or something like this. PX4 has an excellent 24 state EKF that takes into account all sorts of things like uh, gyro bias, accelerometer bias, uh, GPS velocity, drift, all sorts of things might be a future uh, use. And another interesting thing would be to move the scale estimation to, to PX4 from the VIO. So then you would just need visual odometry and then PX4 could maybe estimate the, um, the scale using its, uh, its accelerometer data. I think this would be a really cool project if somebody wanted to work on that in the future as well. Um, and then there's another thing for the future, which is PX4 and ROS communications. And I'm just going to touch on this briefly. Um, but right now, I go back to the same diagram. We have Mavros here in the middle doing the, all this translation job. Uh, and this is with ROS1. But as we go to ROS2, we get to RTPS and DDS. And the cool thing is that PX4 actually has, control, uh, has support for RTPS messaging. So as we start switching to ROS2, we can then speak directly with the flight controller and not have to worry about them running Mavros in the middle. And I think Nuno will be presenting on that next. But in the meantime, I can go to questions. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Julian. That was a really great presentation. Uh, we have a couple of questions from the audience already. Uh, let's see. Can we implement trajectory constraints like minimum snap or minimum jerk for the autopilot? So um, in the mission interface and also in the, um, in the manual stick controls, there are modes that have uh, jerk constraints and velocity constraints and acceleration constraints. Uh, we do not have snap constraints. Um, that is actually usually just handled by the PID loops. You just limit the amount of bandwidth you have there. Awesome. Uh, question number two, which sensors are good for navigation? Uh, is it Kinect or any 3D LiDAR using UAV? I think you probably answered this in your, in your presentation, but... Um... Yeah, uh, the real sense, there's the, the D435, there's the newer ones, the D55, uh, 455, I think. Um, and then also we've worked with the structure cores. Uh, and there's, I mean, there's an, a lot of these stereo cameras out there these days. Um, and then, of course, you can go super expensive and get a big fancy LiDAR system as well. Okay, awesome. Num question number three, uh, is collision detection represented with the laser scan only valid in 2D? And what about uh, obstacles above and below the UAV? So yeah, that's a very good question. Um, for what we have now, there is no obstacle prevention. You, there's nothing stopping you from flying into the ceiling. Uh, if you have a laser pointing down, you can use that to affect the drone's altitude estimation or its distance to ground, and then it'll know when it's getting close to the ground and it'll either try to land or, um, or you can put it into modes where it tries to keep its altitude away from the ground, or you can subscribe to the messages 
and get that data back. All right, thanks, Jung. And one last question is, uh, where can we find the Ethereum BIO ROS node? Uh, it is on GitHub under the Otarian uh, space, um, Otari yeah, Otarian slash BIO. Awesome. Thank you for your time, Julian. This was an excellent talk. Talk to you soon. Absolutely.